Okay, today we're going to talk about the um, <clears throat> the uh, the the lab in the toxicology unit. It's called the LD50 lab. So I'm just going to click on that course resource module again. The labs at the very top. I'm going to show you some other stuff that you can see. You know, there's information about all the different. These are all. Um, <clears throat> jigsaw sessions that I've done about the um, content in this module. Um, so I didn't feel the need to like redo them for you guys. So I just left them here for you. And then we can kind of talk about labs and stuff during these sessions where, you know, other um, semesters we didn't get a chance to do that because we were doing content. Um, again, there's lots of videos here. Anything you want to look at. Um, <coughs> They're all really helpful. They're from all different places. Um, so they're not necessarily from like one specific content or whatever, um, but they are all hosted on my Google Drive. That way um, they're easy for you to get to. Um, these are all little um, kind of like <clears throat> pages I've written about the content for this course. So in case you want to look at them and kind of um, look at those. Um, these ones that look like this, these are from a apes, um, a guy that does a lot of cool apes stuff on um, on uh, YouTube. So so they're pretty interesting. Um, you can see I actually put a couple of them the same twice. Um, <clears throat> here's some interesting video or images, and then um, for this lab, I also have some questions that students have. Uh, asked me um, about the um, about this stuff now now for this lab <clears throat> excuse me you don't have to experiment with real shrimp if you don't want to um, a lot of times in the face-to-face -face classroom they will use real shrimp and it is kind of neat to you know play with brine shrimp but um, if you don't have time or whatever, you don't have to deal with the brine shrimp, but you do need to write your procedure as if you were experimenting with real shrimp. So we'll look at this handout and um, you could see that it's got, um, it's got a little background on LD50 here. Um, and then as we're looking at this, you're going to have, um, you know, this is the, if you're going to do it yourself, this was how you would make it, the, the tea and all of that, but you're going to actually make it, um, <clears throat> if you don't want to make it, uh, actually use the shrimp, you don't have to. Um, here, they already have in this data table, they already have an, um, some data collected for you. You have to calculate your own percent mortality, but um, I believe there's 10 shrimp for each one. So for example, this one would be uh, 100. Um, you can you can actually calculate mortality and all that yourself. Um, you do need to make a graph, okay? You want um, concentration on the x-axis and um, mortality on the y-axis, okay? <clears throat> so let me see if we can figure out a way to do this. Let me um, try and open Excel so I can try and kind of work it out with you. Okay, um, now I have my Excel spreadsheet up. Um, let me see, I can go ahead and, um, I don't know if this data will copy into Excel. Um, no. Okay, so we'll have to type it in. So I'm going to pause the video, um, type in the um, information, and then um, I'll start it back again so you don't have to like hear me typing this whole thing. Okay, so um, I haven't done all of it yet, but I did put this information here because I wanted to kind of show you guys. Um, you can actually take and highlight both of these, and you can wait till it turns into a plus. And then you can do this, and it'll do 10 all the way down. I added this... Um, this column right here because um, to get my percent mortality, I can do B2, well, I'm gonna actually do in parentheses just because I love parentheses to make sure it's doing exactly what I want. And um, I can do that and then scroll all the way down and it gives me my percent mortality for all of these, okay? So I don't have to actually do any math, which is kind of handy because, you know, I don't like doing math. Um, so now we want to make a scatter graph of concentration versus mortality, okay? 
Um, so let's see what we can do. Let's try this. Okay, so um, after a little playing around with this, um, the best way to make a graph I found, <coughs> excuse me, it doesn't work right if you keep the X's there. So I, I got rid of all the X's under concentration and then um, I inserted a scatter chart. And so you can see it only goes up to 10, which is great. Now it says um, use a logarithmic scale for the X axis, does a good job spreading out um, the concentrations. But if you do that, you can't plot the zero data. Okay, so this is what happens if you plot the zero data. Okay, um, so let's try it again without the zero data and we'll look at the difference. No, I didn't want you to make the same thing. Uh. Okay, so we've got this one. Now we'll try and make a new graph. There we go. Okay, and then we can do this. Uh, did I accidentally leave the zeros in? Let me see. Nope. Um, so this is what they're going to give you for that. Um, so it, this can't be the same. Um, uh, yeah, it, so it's basically, um, since it's not, um, it's just not going to include the zero if you try and plot it. Um, so you can leave it this way or you can have it the other way. Um, here, we'll look at the differences just so you can kind of see. Okay, um, and then when you, um, you're gonna look here and you wanna make sure you have access titles and then you want a trend line. Um, now a linear trend line is not gonna make a lot of sense. So, um, let's see, a logarithmic may not work here um, let's see, that one works okay. Um, so you could do something like this. Um, if you've got this one, you, your trend line might look a little better. Still not super. Let's try um, this moving average one. Eh, I don't like that one either. Okay, the polynomial looks a little better. So we can try that. Let's see what polynomial looks like on this one. Just to check it out. Hmm. Kind of the same because we've already made it um, logarithmic, okay? Um, and then we can label this. You'll wanna label this one um, concentration. And you'll wanna label this one uh, percent mortality. You can I would label this like uh, um, first concentration. And you want to put the same axis labels on the other one. I'm just kind of leaving it on this one. Um, let's see. That's basically. Um, kind of what you want and then you want to mark the LD50 on here so 50 is going to be like halfway through so let me see if I can insert like a little um, mark okay so 50 it's going to be like right here and then on this one Okay, it's right here. So what is this? Just a little over two. Okay. Um, so probably the, the um, 
it looks like a little under two and a half because if you look here you see two and a half is six and seven so half would be like five so it looks like it's a little under two and a half um, let me see if I can stop this and if I can make this have more numbers yeah that's a little better um, that kind of gives you a little bit it makes it a little bit easier for you to see This one might not do it because it's already logarithmic. Okay. Yes, yeah, so that one won't really do it. Um, I actually like this one better. I know they say um, they like the logarithmic one, but I kind of like this one better. Um, just make sure you label your x-axis, your y-axis, and give it a good title. Um, and that'll be your graph. And then you've got some questions here that you need to answer. Um, and then it's got a math question, right? So it wants to know using your own mass in kilograms, figure out how many total grams would be required to kill 50% um, of perfect duplicates of yourself from one of the substances in the table below. And be careful about units. You can see some of these are milligrams per kilogram and some of these are grams per kilogram. So you need to be really careful. And then you're going to write a lab report for this one. <coughs> um, so hopefully um so it looks like it's kind of a difficult lab because you're like oh gosh i'm gonna have to do this brine shrimp and all that but you really don't have to do the brine shrimp they already give you the data here okay so you don't okay and then i thought i had it here and then it says how do i calculate how much of a substance would be needed to kill 50 percent of perfect duplicates of myself which is the last question on the lab um so you're going to use the information in that data table in your mass you want to multiply your mass by one of those numbers, um, and that will get kilograms to ca cancel out with the kilograms in the units of mouse wrap LD50. So let's, um, let's see me see. I'm going to bring up that Excel because it had that nice little drawing tool, and we'll see how it works. Um, so let's say um, let's say your mass was or your weight is. Um, 150 pounds so you'll want to convert that to um, kilograms so you could do um, math for that or you can actually just go and um, you can do like a um, like I have an app so if I type 150 in my app it says that's 68 kilograms okay so let's say that I am 68 kilograms and um, I'm going to pick, uh, I'm going to pick the malic acid, the sour candy. So that's 1.6 grams per kilogram, right? This isn't going to be like excellent uh, here. I'm going to do 68 kilograms. These will cross out. And then we will do 1.6 times 68. And you'll get 108.8. So it would take 108.8 .8 grams of, what did we pick? The sour candy to kill uh, perfect duplicates of myself if I weighed 150. So um, that's how this lab works. You'll turn in your lab report into the um, Dropbox folder. Make sure you show your work for the calculations and you include your graph um, that we made in this video. Uh, well, you'll include your own graph. Um, don't include the one I have because remember um, I think the top one actually looks a little better it made it easier for you to find it and I haven't labeled the X and Y axis so don't take a screenshot of the of the um, 
graphs that I made because they're not exactly right, you know, because they don't have the x and y axis labeled. So um, you'll actually have to make the graph yourself, but at least I've kind of showed you how.